How is up y'all, it's Poppin, it's D. Um, so I bought this little baby ring light that I'm recording with, so I hope that it's effective because the lighting in here is really bad when it starts to get dark. But it's USB powered, so I'm using my power bank, but it's about to die. And I'm also <laughs> reacting to this video on my iPad because my laptop is uploading reactions for the day right now. And I can't uh, watch videos while videos are being uploaded because it delays the upload process. Listen, when I tell y'all I'm jumping through hoops trying to get these videos up while I'm out of town, I'm jumping through hoops, but I'm gonna get it done, okay? Because that's what I do. Anyway, we're reacting to this bit today by Patrick CC. It's titled How Extreme Home Makeovers Destroy Families. What? I would think this would be a great thing for families because isn't this the show where they uh, renovate people's houses who are the in their houses are like in really bad shape and they uh remodel everything so oh i can see <laughs> if they if they renovate it so much to the point where these families can't upkeep it i can see how that could be an issue um so maybe that's a problem or maybe it'll increase the value of their home too much so their property taxes will go up mm. and then they lose their whole house mm. that could be an issue anyway let's see uh what he says though let's watch imagine one morning you wake up to this guy screaming outside of your house into a megaphone you walk outside to find out that he is with a television crew and they're sending you and your family on a one-week vacation and during that time that he is going to demolish your home and build you a brand new one from the ground up although it's pretty obnoxious it sounds like a pretty good deal right well it is a good deal until it's not foreclosures angry community members property tax increases property taxes bills doubling to tripling and even more family struggles many of the families that were not featured the on extreme haters. makeover home edition ended up worse off than before Ty Pennington showed up on their doorstep. But to fully understand how some families were negatively affected by what seems to be a very generous gift, we must first take a look at the families that were carefully chosen to get these home remodels. Typically, individuals would fill out an application form on the ABC website, like which really required started. them to provide a story of why they deserved a new house. You could also nominate another family, such as a friend or a member of your community. Every episode starts with a story of the deserving family in need, such as a family that lost their mother or father, a family with a disabled child, a family that's living in poverty, or a family affected by a natural disaster. Since this was a reality television show, it was very important to produce the most tear-jerking episodes possible. Featuring Sorry, stories man. that would deeply tug at the viewer's heartstrings. Hear, Some people argued that specifically targeting families who had endured unimaginable tragedy and faced overwhelming hardship was ABC exploiting them for better ratings. Joe Scarborough mm -hmm. of MSNBC yeah. claimed that Extreme Makeover has a secret wish list of victims the show is trying to hunt down. They want to find a family who has multiple children with Down syndrome. Multiple they want to find a child syndrome. with a rare condition that causes rapid aging and death. Oh. They want to find an extraordinary mom or dad who's diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. Now, if the show was aggressively targeting these people, sure, that's a bit weird. Especially because it's likely yeah. for the TV ratings and not for charity. However, mm -hmm. it is still a good deed. Plus, if they helped out middle class families or ones that they seemed like they said, they want people that bad legs. Off, they would be criticized for not focusing on a more deserving family. I don't think home makeover is taking advantage of the families however participants were selected the crew would treat the families to a fully funded vacation to destinations such as hawaii california or florida during the family's trip abc would rally hundreds of contractors construction workers and volunteers in the local community to help sometimes they would even make facebook pages so all their neighbors can stay up to date oftentimes the volunteers are critical for the house getting completed on time then ty pennington would video call the family and show his crew absolutely Absolutely destroying their house. Sometimes they would take it too far. Take the Rapati Pierce family, for example. The mother and father were both police officers, and one tragic night, Christina was shot during a foot pursuit, which led to her being paralyzed from the waist down. Oh, so they hired the LA SWAT team to place bombs inside of the house, detonate them, right. and drive a massive battering ram attached to an armored truck to destroy the house. Now, obviously, they have to do demolition to rebuild a new house from the ground up, but it would still be a bit traumatic to watch your home filled with all those memories get smashed to a million pieces but the ridiculousness didn't stop there remember this is reality tv just building a very practical standard and modest home wouldn't be good enough so the carpenters 
and designers were pushed to create increasingly elaborate designs and gimmicks oh, yeah. to boost ratings, keep this such up? as this airplane-themed bedroom with bags of peanuts as curtains, this very small backyard that was converted to a miniature go-kart track. How many trips around that go-kart track would the kid be able to do before they get absolutely sick of it? Why not a playroom with a ball pit containing 27,000 plastic balls? And my personal favorite, a teenager's room entirely made out of duct tape. Yes. I have what? a bedspread and a pill case made out of duct tape. The designers would take one small facet of their personality and dedicate the entire bedroom to it. Like this toddler who said he wants to be yeah, a cardiologist when he grows up. So they put EKG signals on the walls and a dresser designed to look like a human heart. Rooms like this seem very difficult to age in, and the tacky okay. designs would actually take a considerable amount of effort to change. But sometimes it wasn't just tasteless designs. It would actually create new responsibilities that the family may not have even wanted. For example, this teenager got a jacuzzi that took up half the bedroom. Could you imagine your room constantly smelling like hot chlorine water? The cost to maintain a jacuzzi is only about $20 to $40 per month in sanitizer and chemicals, but even doing the maintenance is a burden that maybe nobody wanted. Just draining that water every three to four months like you're supposed to would be incredibly inconvenient. Another thing they did often was add huge fish tanks or animal habitats, like this boy's room that looks like the reptile section at a pet store, complete with frogs, turtles, and lizards. Buying pet food, supplies, and cleaning the tanks is even more important because it will literally kill the animal if you don't. Extreme home makeover inserting new responsibility yeah, onto you without your choice isn't only annoying. For some people, it created even more problems and financial and stress. stress that ultimately forced them to move out of their homes. <laughs> now, most of the time, ABC would entirely pay off the home for the family. However, owning a home is more than just paying the mortgage. Oh, Expenses sure. such as property taxes, utilities, and home maintenance add up extremely quickly. There have been multiple reports of families whose expenses doubled, if not tripled, within the first year of living there. Mm. The Dickinson family went from an 1,800 square foot ranch to a six bedroom, four bathroom, 4,000 square foot super Ooh. home equipped with cutting edge technology. So it's only natural to assume that the bills would go up. Their electric bill alone went from about $200 per month to as high as $600 after. Their property taxes tripled. The wife, India, said she wasn't worried. My husband works and I work, so if I have to work another job to help keep it up, that's what I'll do. But as the years went on, it got worse and worse. And in October of 2016, William filed a Chapter 13 bankruptcy petition to save his home from foreclosure. He had only $5 in cash, $287 in a checking account, and $15 in a joint savings account at the time of filing. However, it seems like they never lost the house because on 2022 Google Maps, you can see William and his daughter standing outside the front door, proud of their estate. But that situation was nothing compared to the Oakvath family. The Oakvaths were from Gilbert, Arizona, and their story began with a heartfelt letter from their daughter, Cassandra, who requested the show to renovate the cancer ward where she had been a patient. Touched by Cassandra's selfless request, the producers not only granted her wish, but also surprised the family of nine with a two-story mansion. The construction involved a massive team of 1,600 contractors and volunteers that garnered attention from across the state. Unfortunately, this wasn't happily ever after. Utility costs reached $1,200 for electricity per month and $400 per month for water. Property taxes increased from 1600 pre-makeover to 5600 after. Brian lost his job and was battling depression. With no other immediate solution, they used their house as collateral to take out a $405,000 loan. It was an adjustable rate mortgage and the payments became too much for the family to handle. This was their dream home and they knew they couldn't afford it. Craziest part is they never even asked for this in the first place. Right. The ironic part about these situations is that people's first instinct is to doubt the families. Why couldn't they figure it out? Why not get another job? Why didn't they just sell the it's house? The Most of the time, nobody wants to buy these homes. The Oak Baths listed their house for $1.8 million and slowly started customized. to lower the price over the next year. Out of desperation, they ended up selling for 540K, just enough to break even on their loan mm. and maybe put a down payment on a new place. The Beach family have been trying to sell their home since February 2013. The price tag started at 700000 and is now down to 535000 They say they've had to sell because the upkeep of the house is just too much now. It's a unique home and will take a unique person to buy it. Most critics forget the reason these families got these homes were because they were struggling in the first place. Many of them had pre-existing debt. Some of them weren't even homeowners in the first place. They were renting the house and ABC mm. bought it and built them a new one. 
Combine these money issues with the family trauma they were all experiencing, and it's a recipe for disaster. Damn. From my research, every single family that sold their house sold it for less than what it cost to build. But no matter what reason they chose to sell their house, they face backlash from the community. Since each home is a community project with hundreds of volunteers, they look at the home like a gift from their neighbors. The Hassel family decided to sell just three years later because it was too much stress to handle. Yeah, then a publication interviewed members of the community to see how they feel. A lot of people gave time, product, and services. Some are very angry. Are y'all gonna Some pay? Have asked are y'all gonna pay? They deserve it. There was even a letter written to They're the local newspaper that titled, The entire Hassel family story is a disgrace and humiliation to Ooh. this community. The Harper family's house foreclosed, really? and the mayor's response was, It's aggravating. It just makes you mad. You do that much work, and they just squander it. Because he helped vault a massive beam into place in the Harper's living room. The Nicholas family received a home after the father died from contracting hepatitis C when he was pricked with a patient's contaminated needle. Nine years later, the home was foreclosed because the mother could not manage the previous home mortgage and new property taxes that tripled in price. I feel bad because so many people came together to help us, she said. I know I shouldn't feel like I let them down, but I do. Many of the families feel guilt and shame that they couldn't live happily ever after. Most of them don't want to sell their houses, but the financial stress and family tragedy is overbearing. As the years went on, ABC scaled back their projects because so many homes were being foreclosed on. They eventually realized these over-the-top charity acts were too extreme to be truly helpful. But then their ratings dropped since the homes weren't extreme enough for TV, which led to the show being canceled in 2012. I also noticed that they only have a small selection of episodes available on Hulu today, and all of the families who went on to sell or get foreclosed on got their episodes removed from streaming Ooh. services. It turns out when you find a broken family facing hardship and financial problems, build them an extremely oversized home with ugly interiors in the middle of a neighborhood surrounded by other homes not even worth half as much as the new one they just built, it ends up doing more harm than good. Yikes, this is wild. Who thought this was a good idea? Knowing all of the cons associated with, you know, increasing the size of their house and adding all this extra high tech shit in it like why why would you go through with this because at first i was like wait this is a good thing but it only took me a few seconds <laughs> to realize that oh no what about the increase in property tax what about the upkeep so you telling me all of these people who thought of this show who put their heads together they couldn't come to that conclusion that hmm, this is actually would probably be a, a hindrance to them but actually, they probably did already know that this was going to happen, but they didn't care. They just wanted the ratings and the money from it, which is really trifling. But yeah, this is wild. Y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.